the man. Two before we have comments from Don Scott and Peter McKenna. We might go back up uh, in the air once again. Max Stevens is uh, spending the afternoon circling the ground. And Maxi, what's it look like from the air now? Well, Sandy, as you can see, it looks ideal. And that weather is continuing and continuing to be ideal. And hopefully it'll stay that way until about 5 o'clock this afternoon. Earlier this week, tickets were sold out for the grand final. And I'm sure there'll be no doubt whatsoever that the VFL will see a crowd of about 100,000 at the MCG for the grand final between Essendon and Hawthorne. Looking around at the traffic situation, once again, it is still rather light. And as I said earlier, if you're still popping out, still a little bit of parking over at Olympic Park. We'll take it back to you down on the ground, Sandy. All right, Max, just before you go, can you see any threatening clouds in the sky at all, or has it cleared pretty well? Well, down at Geelong, Sandy, there are a few clouds, but they're staying down there over Cadinia Park. And I think, as I said, it'll stay fine. The sun's shining, and it'll stay that way until about five tonight. OK, Max, thank you for that. And a special cheerio to all our friends watching down in Geelong. We hope you don't get soaked. But there we are. <laughs> That's Conditions an unbelievable idea. Weather, weather report, isn't it? Well, he's... In fact, we can probably see it a bit better than Max. We can see it cloud in the distance. But the day is good. And, uh, well, it's just the one day in September we've all been looking forward to, that the 12 clubs have been striving for for so long. And at last it is here. Kevin Morris can see a premiership in his sights for this Army Reserve side of Essendon's. And he certainly doesn't want to let it slip down. I think this is the most important quarter, you know, when you're in a grand final is this last quarter. Having played maybe in a couple of them, you can either come from behind and it's just as hard to hang on because the other side realises it's the last quarter of the game or the year for them and they really do apply themselves in the last quarter. So you really count the minutes off as a player. So we're set to go in this final term. making their way to their respective positions for Collingwood. It's got to be a last-ditch effort. They trail 16-10 to 11-6. They're not out of it, but they've certainly got the job ahead of them. They've looked so impressive. They started impressively, Sandy, but uh, full credit to uh, Essendon. I gave them the $100 last uh, last week because they play with such arrogance and this is common with their senior team as well when they get in front. Centre bounce to start the final term. Atkin on the ball. Collingwood need the first couple of goals and need them quickly. Allen held whilst not in possession so he'll put the Woods into attack. Ground really building to capacity now. It'll be up around the 80,000 mark already. Teasdale takes possibly his first mark for the day third in fact well he's been pretty quiet down there mind you they haven't had a lot of Fords firing anyway Deez has kicked a couple of goals one in the first term and one in the second see what he does with this one it won't quite make the distance Fife's waiting down in front he'll shoot it over the shoulder and he's kicked goal. it that's the start they wanted a couple more quick ones and they could be back in business Greg Fife's first goal, 16-10 to 12-6. It's well, a pity it's happening now. I'm sorry, Peter, but it's a pity it's happening now if you see Teasdale lining up for goal because Fife snapped off the hands of the pack. They should have been doing that earlier in the third quarter when uh, Teasdale was having the ball punched away from, from him continually by Andrews. Good to see uh, Greg Fife on the ground and in the play, and uh, he's a very enthusiastic young player, a good little player too, and... Uh, well, he's got a fair amount of ability. There's a, a player who's dominated the game in my book in Salmon. He's been a really top player today. Here it is over the back with Doug Cox. So the ball is tapped down to him. That was good play, Mark Thompson. Cox has got a ton of pace as he streaks away and goes for the short pass out wide. He's looking there for Michael Davis. He traps the football, goes for the long hand pass to Kevin Morris. A further hand pass out towards centre wing. Uh, there's a, a short pass off line here. He was looking for Salmon. 
taking the mark there was Atkin. Atkin gets away with the football. Down towards the centre of the ground where the mark is taken by Kelly. Kelly's looking for the running Noel Lovell. Oh, he gets shoved in the back by Sheldon. In goes Sheldon after the football. Banks has got it now. The Magpie starting to fight back as Banks has a casual bounce. Kicks it high up towards full forward. Andrews and Teasdale. Andrews with great strength. Here's the Bombers again as they're bringing it out of attack. Kenny, uh, Gary Sheldon went in hard after the football against Banks. Good, strong football as it's now on the half-forward line. The ball is smothered. In goes Lovell. He knocks it wide. Grabbed there by Doug Cox once again, who kicks it high. Doesn't travel a great deal of distance, about 20 metres. Up towards Salmon. He gets bundled out of the way. Scrambly play at the moment as Apton charges through and intercepts that hand pass. Apton has a bounce. He's on half-forward flank. He kicks it back towards full forward. The high flyers there, and it's a lovely mark taken by Tony Russell. Hand pass over the top. Here's another goal coming up to Collingwood. This time it's kicked by Tony Beers.